All right, so this is your host, Daryl McKell Brooks, and we're back. I think we're doing a little better. I'm waiting for Miss Stephanie Trossel to come on. And for our second round, it is about 9.34, and I'm waiting for Miss Stephanie. And are you there? Hello, Miss Trossel. This is your host, Daryl McKell Brooks, and I just... Uh, we're waiting for Stephanie Trossel. We, uh, Trossel, we had, I think, a little internet problem, and uh, she's coming back on. And so, all right, I'm going to approve her. Ah, we're back. Hey, are you, all right. That's there you go. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know what was going on, but I could hear you, but I couldn't hear you. I couldn't see your, your screen stop. So hopefully, uh, we uh, I cleared the internet problem. Well, so, I think you, know, um, you get two black Republicans together. Of course, they they're going to fight to keep us from talking. Oh so, yeah, you know, Facebook, yeah, Facebook. gremlins. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I, I think you, you're, you're definitely an interesting uh, a sister. You know, you're conservative, and, uh, and you know the issues, and, 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 that's, and that's very good, awesome. And, and you know, I've, you know I want, I've listened to a couple of your shows that are on, on the radio, yeah. and, uh, you know, you're, you, you love to talk, and oh. you have something. And you have, you, I mean, you're, you're from Chicago. Yeah. A lot of shit. Hey, <laughs> y'all, Chicago people—they love to talk. And, and uh, I met, you know, a few people from Chicago. Mm -hmm. They're very loud and, yep. and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> guilty. Well, I, you know, I'm, I talk fast, and um, I you talk fast. Yeah, I have yeah. a lot to say. Um, you know, and in 2012, when I got the opportunity to be on the radio, and here's Obama mm -hmm. running for a second term, and who's this this woman that happens to be a conservative from Obama's hometown and she has the audacity to be black. I was challenged a lot. People were calling in from the South side and the West side, which are predominantly black neighborhoods and in the dialect of, you know, Hey, you just saying what they telling you to say. And I was constantly yeah, challenged. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you know, as if they were whispering in my ear, telling me to say what I was saying. And I, you know, um, I, you know, don't, don't have a college degree. Um, I don't say that to be negative. I just got to be honest. I'm just blessed with common sense and experience. Um, and so that's what I just, my theory is that I try to be entertaining. I try to educate people and try to talk about things that maybe they haven't heard all week. But I also try to tell them nothing what I've heard, but what I know about this country and why I love America and my experience. And we talked earlier with the first show, we were talking about you said something about um, not training people to go to college and get um, good jobs. I, I, you know, I love McDonald's. I'm just going to tell you. When I was 15 years old, I got a job at McDonald's. And by the time I was 16, I was a, a crew chief. And then I was a manager. And um, I love McDonald's because they rewarded people that worked hard. At 17 years old, they would toss me the keys. And I had the keys to a million dollar back in the 80s. It was probably worth you know about a million dollars franchise. And I think about how... Um, Good work, hard work, and good work ethic. It taught me so much about how to mop a floor, waiting on customers. If you ask me, I still can name the seven steps to waiting on a customer that I learned in the 80s. And when me and my husband, when my husband and I started our own business, I, that's what I modeled it after uh, at McDonald's and the consistency. And um, not everybody's going to go to college, which is okay. But when I think about those those um, starting wage jobs, as the, uh, I call it starting wage, they call them living wage jobs. You're not supposed to get those jobs when you're 40 and you've got four kids. You get that job like I did at 16, and then you work hard. And then I went from McDonald's to Mrs. Phil's Cookies. And then I mm -hmm. took a, free, a break for a few years um, that raised my kids. And then I came back, and I was a manager for a four-star hotel. And it's just all about working hard from the beginning, because not everybody's going to go to college. But you don't wake up one day and decide, I'm going to go get a job at Walmart pushing a shopping cart, and you expect them to pay you a living wage. This is yeah. where do these people come from. What have you been yeah, doing you for the last 20 years? Yeah, you're right, and and it's it's uh, oh yeah, you know I worked at when I was young, and I worked at a fast food yeah, restaurant. Yeah, that'll teach you 15, everything. Seventeen years old, mm -hmm. and yeah, they, they taught you a lot. But when, yeah, and you're definitely right. And one of the things that we we're, uh, we're talking about is that younger generation that are graduating at you know 18 years old, and uh, you know we, we we tell them listen, you know, go to technical school, oh, get a skill or, or, or something. Technical right. school, mm -hmm. go to get a skill. Or, or, or go to college and and, and what in technical school, sc schools or, or go or go to a four-year university or college and get a great education right and one of the things that yeah you work hard yeah but when you're at when you're 35 years old when you're 40 years old and and, and, and you're working on the line mm -hmm. you know and, and you're working the cash register and you actually you got three four kids you know, you're making $12 an hour, and then you decide, well, you know, I should be making $15, $16 an hour working at the cash register. You know, there's something wrong with that type of mentality. Mm -hmm. 
and 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 and, and that's what you know Beck calls that that whole servers worker generation because you you start to you starting to see that where where kids at 18 19 20 years old they don't see a future mm -hmm. they don't they, you know it's 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 terrible and we know that from the uh, if you look at the inner city and the suburb kids and uh when you we have a conversation with them what exactly do they know do they know what's really happening in this country and you know i remember you know we had a discussion it was a, a college student college students and they're african american college students and we we talked about obama and um, uh, you know, and and we had discussion. What was the color of Obama's mo mother? Mm -hmm. yep. and, <laughs> well, you probably made some people mad, you know, about that. And, and, oh, what was the color of, of of Obama's mother? And they all said, "Oh, oh, she was a black woman." You know, <laughs> you know, really. and, and, well, you know. And and, and 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 you know, and that was the, we were just talking about race, you know, just having mm -hmm. a discussion. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how do you know she was black? Oh, because he's black. And and oh, so Obama and and they assumed that Obama's mother was black. No, she was a white woman. But the idea of misinformation, yeah. not knowing what's really, you know, what's happening, or, or, or you know, or, or the history. Mm -hmm. And and so we had discussions on, you know, on politics and. And and, and, and and they didn't know who their senator was. They didn't really know who the governor was. They didn't know if the gov governor was Republican or Democrat. And these are college students. And, and that's what I think a lot of times when you talk to former Democrats, especially um, black conservatives, we were just, um, we were we thought we were paying attention. We were just going along to get along. And then when we started paying attention to the, to the issues, that's when we realized, wait a minute. And I, I would, I'm so happy that I was never stopped in the street back when I was 19 and somebody stuck a microphone in my face and asked me about what's the policy of the Democrat party, I would have been like, I don't know. I was born in Chicago, deep blue. I vote Democrat because everybody I know is a Democrat. And, and, and that's what I think. I, I would like to believe that my children, because of what I do, and I've been long before I was on the radio, you couldn't sit next to me because I'm going to bend your ear about why I'm a conservative. And I would like to believe that my children are a lot more informed than what I was. And you have to pay attention. You have to be aware of what's happening. And you know what gets me as a woman, uh, a black woman, as a black person in general, a descendant of chattel slaves, how can anybody not take that act of voting so seriously. Our ancestors died. They were anything to get to that polling place because the Democrats were trying to keep us from getting there. And so they fought and died and bled and everything. So I'm just not going to take that act seriously. I'm not going to take the time to get to know who I'm voting for. I'm not going to follow some of the issues. You can't, you know, you can't spend the time to know everything about everything when it comes to a party, but you know who the Democrats are. They're about programs. They're about killing babies and, and targeting mm -hmm. black babies in the womb disproportionately. When I listen to liberal color people radio all day, they will run the stats on black people disproportionately getting a, a, a traffic ticket opposed to their white counterparts, but they will never talk about how Planned Parenthood targets us in the womb. The, you know, disproportionately, the number of babies that die every day but the majority are black people and that's how could you be you, you don't they don't mind that somehow they've been um brainwashed and i think about margaret sanger they don't even know who she is and what she was yeah. about and why she started planned parenthood to limit the number of black people she must be dancing in her grave because she not only uh, you know has still abortion still going on but she got black people to buy into killing each other killing their own baby in the most safest place that it should be under the mother's heartbeat and then they want the government to pay for it i know she's like yay who knew that and to get pastors to buy in on this and that's what breaks my heart about being um a, a black person of faith how do do black people which because I, I always thought that we were very we we're you know there's a church on every corner in our neighborhood it might be a liquor store next to it but there is a church and in that church when i grew up on the west side of chicago they weren't preaching this politically correct kind of message. It was unapologetic. This is the value. This is what I believe in. But how are you going to preach those values and then have invite these these predatory um, uh, politicians into your, your church every four years to lie to you and promise you this, even though they support a, a party that that calls God a liar? that there aren't just two, a man and a woman, that they know it's okay to kill a baby and everything else that we believe in. And 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 because black people, as I said, I joke that we were religious. We go to um, Bible study on Tuesday. We got choir practice and they go to church all day long. But on election Tuesday, somehow they leave their values 
outside of the election box and go in there and vote for everything against the Bible. And it just blows me away that they're not called out on that. And I know in the beginning, in the, in the 50s and 60s, the church was a safe haven where they could gather and try to um, and organize against the Democrats because that's who they were, you know, that's who was targeting us and trying to kill us. And but but nowadays it's unfortunate that it's a place where they just allow anybody to come in there and you get oh, people yeah. like Hillary coming there talking with a black dialect trying to you know whatever just and we just allow that to happen and it just breaks oh, my yeah. heart. And and, and it's sad, you know. I remember uh, I think this was like in the mid '90s when our uh, and and Gore was at a church and uh, I think it was in Atlanta and uh, Al Gore was president, vice president Al Gore was speaking and, and, and some, the, some woman caught the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it, 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 it was so She bad. caught something. I don't know if it was the Holy yeah, Ghost. She, probably she, Satan. She, she, I don't know what she caught, but I, I just shook my head and I saw it on television and they were just screaming and hollering. And, 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 and it's sad because yes, the Democrats do do this. I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I I go to uh, former, I used to go to this church, a, a very political church in the trend. I'm not going to say its name, but right. the Democrats, you know, would go there on every election yep. and, and, and bring all the Democrats mm -hmm. in. The people running for governor, United States Senate would go there, and the preacher let them speak. And this, they, they were liberals. Uh, I remember McGreevy was there, uh, came to our church uh, in Trenton. And, you know, McGreevy wind up having a sexual affair with another man and becoming and marrying another man and, and, re, and had to resign from governor. But, you know, and, and there were a lot of blacks who didn't know this. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, oh, my God, how could this guy right. be doing this? Well, he come to your church. He, su he, he supported gay marriage. Uh, he, he supports everything under the sun. And, and it's OK. Anything goes. And you're still going to. And, and what it is, they, they, they're still going to let a, a, a Democrat, a liberal, a far left, a progressive come in here and, and speak to your members and then go to church on every Sunday. And you go to church on every Sunday and you don't question it. You don't challenge it. You don't say anything. And a preacher is a, has, the, ha, has the moral obligation. But they, they're not using it to, mm -hmm. to say no. They're just inviting me because they want to be a part of the politics. They, they want to be, you yeah. Know? And it's just so unfortunate. They want to feel good. Mm -hmm. They got the governor in their church, mm -hmm. the, the, the person running for governor, Democrat, Democratic running for governor or, or United States Senate. So the press is there and they want to get good pictures and, and you know, they want they feel like they're somebody. Yeah, you know, they're less concerned about saving souls than they are about filling those seats and tithing mm -hmm. and getting money. And when those politicians can write those big checks and, um, and, and everybody's on, you can't wait, they're all on the take. And it's just unfortunate. Why are they inviting these people into the church and it just makes me sad because we're a brilliant people that came up from the slave house to the White House in, in um, a few hundred years. So I have so much confidence and I love being a black in the history that everything that entails. But sometimes it's just embarrassing that we get duped. And um, as I mentioned, this is the Illinois primary season. And I said this on my show Saturday. You, you, you listen to people, their ad when they on a regular station and it's to the general population, they just run this nice ad. It's a white liberal saying that we're going to get Trump and he's mean and we're, but whatever, still no agenda. But when they, that same politician will run an ad on the black station, he's got some white black woman talking like she rolling her neck and saying, mm hmm. And I'm like, so why are you placating? Why are you pandering with a different, you got to speak our language because we wouldn't have understood the regular ad that you're running on NBC and all the other radio stations. You have to sink into our levels and just talk about criminal justice. Yeah. And I'm thinking we have other issues other than criminal justice. We care about great schools and clean neighborhoods, and we want our kids to grow up and achieve the American dream like everyone else. They're not talking about lowering our taxes in a state like Illinois, where people have paid their dues, they, they've raised their children, they paid off their mortgages, but the taxes are making people leave. They're losing their homes, retired people that have done everything right because the taxes are out of are, are just out of control. We're not talking about that. They To black people, they're just going to say, well, we're going to make sure we're taken care of. I heard Corey, what is it, Corey Brooks? Your, Booker. No, Booker, no, no, Booker, because no, 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 I have, Booker. we have a Corey Brooks here. I was get it. Booker, I heard him today on Sirius XM on Liberal Color People Radio. I heard him today just talking about uh, electing people that's going to take care of the, it's up to you to, you know, make sure you select the kind of people that's going to take care. You might be doing well, but you have to be worried about the other people that are doing well. So you need to elect people like me and that care about lesser than. I would just give me a break. You know, you never hear them talk about one main issue when they talk about black issues. 50 mm -hmm. years ago, 70% of our children were born in two parent loving homes. 
50, fast forward 50 years later, 70% plus of our children are born a single parent. And we know that automatically makes you more likely to be a victim of poverty. And, and why are black fathers are just as important as any other culture's fathers. We take them out of the home and we're wondering why Junior joined the gang because that's the first male figure that he may have seen with any kind of power and it gave him any attention. That's why, and we, we don't address that. You'll never hear Jesse Jackson talking about that, saying take care of your children. Um, don't have children until you get married. And, and Walter E. Williams, who I love and I had the pleasure of interviewing, for years he would talk about the, you know, the steps of breaking you know, the, the chain of cycle of poverty. You know, graduate from high school, get a job and keep a job. Don't have children until you get married. And when you get married, stay married. That automatically he didn't even mention college. You can break the mm -hmm. cycle of poverty if you just adhere to those four simple steps. But that's not what we're even addressing in our community. And they never talk about us achieving the American dream. And they, you know, we, we have these people on, because that's why I spend so much time listening to them. And people say, how can you listen to Democrat radio? Because I'm still trying to figure out how they're keeping them on the donkey plantation. What are the tricks? Because there's nothing on the donkey plantation that's worth being there. But they, they always say the American dream is for white people. And I'm like, really? I mean, we're achieving it. We've got more millionaires and everything of color. And this is the greatest country. I heard a liberal host today on the morning drive um, say that America is a great country, but just for white people. Now, this person made for 30 something years, made lots of money in white media, retires. And now he's on the black station is talking all this crap about white people for years. He had all these white fans that, that followed him and respected him. But now he feels he can be who he is and be true to he, who, who, what he really believes. And it just makes me sad that somebody listening to him, a young black man is listening to that 18 year old looking around. They tell you that Republicans are racist and don't care about you, but they say, stay here and vote for us. We care about you. But this kid's looking at his neighborhood was blighted, no stores, failing schools. And you're telling them that America's not for you. What, 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 well, how do you get up in the morning and not put a bullet in your, you know, put a gun in your mouth because you have nothing to live for, not telling them this is the greatest country and there's nothing you can't achieve. Look what we've done, you know, after everything that was done to us and look how we thrive and we're living well and, and it's just up to you and nobody, the government is not in charge anymore that, that kept us with the Jim Crow and segregated and, and all these things. And I mean, people always say to me, well, don't you care about racists? And there are a lot of racists in the world. I think. I'm, I'm dying for somebody to come up to me and call me the N-word. And I'm just going to be, oh, okay, good. I'm glad. To be, let's get this out. Let's talk. But I, I, I can't concentrate on somebody not liking me because of my color. Because I'm going to work mm -hmm. hard. I'm going to achieve it. Because there's so many people that look just like me that hate me just because I'm a Republican. So I, I you know, so oh, yeah. you know that. And, and so oh, yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I yeah. can't judge all white people because one person when I was 14 <laughs> called me the N-word as I, I was at a bus stop. You know, so I, I didn't judge all white people because I was told that they all think this way or they all out to get me. And and I was afraid of white people. My freshman year of high school, I didn't want to get off the bus. It was in a white neighborhood where the KKK would march. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was just forced into the situation where I was the only black in a lot of my classes. And I got to know these girls, all girls schools at a, at a private Catholic school. And I just got to know them as individuals. And I figured the ones that didn't want to be around me because I was black, they wouldn't be around me. And I, and I had an amazing four year experience. And I fast forward, I got to tell you the story. This is our 35th um, anniversary for my high school reunion. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to going. I've never missed the reunion. And unfortunately, I'm the only black person that shows up, but it doesn't matter. Those women are all Democrats because I was in Chicago where my school was. And it was, you know, and so. Uh, and I, since I've been on the radio, I've, everybody that follows me on social media knows how I feel about whatever. Those women are so kind to me when I walk into that reunion, hugging me, knowing I'm a staunch Republican. And here's my little grade school that I um, went to, a Catholic grade school on the west side of Chicago. 26 people in my class. 2009, I decided to, to um, hold a reunion. And I started a Facebook page to try to get us together. And these are people that look like me, that I, I've known since I was second grade. They kicked me mm -hmm. out of my Facebook page that I started just because I was a Republican. Didn't even g give me a chance that, boom, wow. the Republican yeah. held the reunion without me. And I, I was blocked by half of them. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I thought the white Democrats would treat me that way. No, it's the people that look like me. I'm welcome at a at the, my school high school reunion without any issue, not even invited to the one that I started. So, wow. you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely understand what you're talking about. I mean, I remember when I became a uh, involved with the Tea Party movement. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, blacks that were upset with me. Oh, how do you scream out Tea Party this? Oh, you don't like the president. You know, how could you join a Tea Party? Well, it was, and I just said, well, how could you? Look what's happening around your, your cities and your state. 
you know, the failure of education, yeah. no jobs, you know, the crime rate, the mm -hmm. violence yeah. in the schools, you know, uh, kids not able to learn and be because of the failure of, of the left policies. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things, uh, Trenton is right like 30 minutes from Princeton. Oh, wow. And, you know, it, and, and you look at the talk about the Princeton liberal, Princeton University. I'm banned from Princeton University. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. So much for freedom of speech. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm banned from Princeton University. <laughs> I was with Cornell West one day, and he said, "He said, brother Darrell, who was in his office, I was office. You know, they they, they don't like you." I said, "Well, well, how come? You know, oh, you know, politics. You know, you're you're this, you're that." I said, "Oh, okay." Next thing you know, I get a letter from from Sound Nine So I mean, I, that's it, a badge of honor because I I, yes. I brag about who I've been blocked by, on Twitter by. You know, the NAACP uh -huh. blocked me, Jesse Jackson blocked me, even Cher, Oscar winner Cher, has blocked me. So. That doesn't bother me. I'm, I I proudly display the list of people that won't. But it's really so, sad that a college would, that used to be the basket of freedom of speech, now we're not welcome yeah. there. Only crazy liberals are welcome. Well, I, had a, I, think I, I think having a Tea Party meeting there and, and, and the professors allowed it to happen, you know, was one of the reasons why. But, but what I'm saying is that you would think, you know, the... Uh, the African-American African community and the leaders say that, well, all these conservatives or Republicans, mm -hmm. they're all racist, oh, yeah. they're no good. They don't like you. But I remember sometimes when I was at Princeton and Princeton University and outside of Princeton, I remember I said hi to a white woman and she was coming out of college with a dog. And she said, oh, you're talking to, your, you're talking to my dog. You know, and, and it was like, wow, really said that? And then they look at you, they, you know, start they, this, they, the conversation, they look above you, they don't talk to you, mm -hmm. and know oh, you're a tea, or oh, how could you be a, a, a black person mm -hmm. in a tea party and yeah. a conservative, how dare you? You know, and then in African American, they were screaming out tea party and, <laughs> and, and say all types of stuff. And, you know, and then when you sit down with the liberals and you say, well, let's have a discussion uh, about what's really going on, you know, it, they blame the Republican Party. Oh. They blame us the tea party. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I was, remember I had a flag. You see this flag uh -oh. here, don't trip uh -oh. on me. Uh -huh. uh -oh. The Gaskin, oh yeah, the Gaskin flag, right? <laughs> It was a lady, she was a left, she African-American. She said, this flag means violence. And I said, well, how can this flag mean violence? And, oh, because they said, uh, kill the bill. Well, well, I mean, that's because the Tea Party said, kill the bill. That means that they're violent. You know, and, and this is, this they, is how they think. Yeah, it's, it's this really. This is how they think. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it's, and it's sad because, you know, we're trying to, you know, as, as conservatives, you know, we're trying to re-educate people. We're trying to talk mm -hmm. about what's really happening change your ideas, change your policies, because the policies are failing. Yeah. You know, I want to, you know, I, I want to um, mention one thing about what we're doing is called this, the On, on Fire Tour, mm -hmm. where we're going all over the country. Please come to Chicago. We, we need, we need a conservative. Yeah, we're, we're coming to Chicago, <laughs> and, but, but we're, we're going in RV, a lot of conservative guys on, on Facebook, they have Facebook shows, mine and Jamal, mm -hmm. um, Modell, mm -hmm. uh, Ty Turner, myself, and some other ones, we're going in a, on an RV and we're traveling in an RV, knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. We're going into barbershops. Oh, yeah. We're going into restaurants. We're going on the corners. We're passing out constitutions, declarations of independence, mm -hmm. books. We're going to talk about the Constitution, but we're going to talk about family values. We're going to ask, what do you believe in immigration? Because we know now, if you go in the city and talk to especially black men mm -hmm. and, and women, you, you know, asking about illegal immigration, yeah. they'll tell you, we don't support They it. don't. And, and it's we, a shame that their party's selling them out. But, you know, the illegal brown is the new black vote because they're, you oh, know, yeah. we're killing each other. We're getting killed in the womb. We're getting killed the AIDS and we're getting mm -hmm. killed with gang violence. So they need a new base. And so let's bring yeah. in the illegal brown people to give away our birthrights, what was promised to us in the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, and we're just going to mm -hmm. give it to someone. And they always mm -hmm. say Republicans hate immigration. They always leave out the word illegal immigration. We need to know who's coming into our country. We need to vet them the same way we know who we invite into our homes. And it's a shame that more um, that Republicans need to take advantage of this and go into those neighborhoods like you are, you guys are doing and say, hey, we're against illegal immigration because right here in Chicago, uh, they are coming up with this new ID that's going to be for illegals. And we know it's just a hop, skip, and a jump for them using that ID to vote with. And that's and it's a slippery slope. And, and we need oh, yeah. to stand up. And I think we can unite with Black Democrats to say, wait a minute, this is un this is unacceptable. And, and we, we have to put a stop to this. And this is ridiculous that they want to give. When we have Black children going to failing sh schools that are infested with rats in Chicago, that was a story recently. 
-hmm. but you got to make sure that the legals get you know uh, uh, good schools and a great opportunity we got three strikes and you're out and they get amnesty oh, come yeah on. You know, right. yeah and, and one of the things is that phil murphy our, our governor he's a new progressive liberal governor uh he is he supports he wants sanctuary state you know, and, and, and my here. thing is, it, it, it doesn't make sense. No, we, we know. You, this is, is going to shock you, Daryl. We have a Republican governor, Republican, that made it a sanctuary state. And we're still trying yeah. to understand what the, you know, Democrats were probably in shock. Like, what? This is a Republican. It's, it's um, it, who, who thinks that it's okay to make an entire state a sanctuary state? Is any place, no place should. And that word sanctuary gets to me because that just reminds me of your mother holding you in a safety. They get sanctuary. We get, what do we get? What, what are American yeah. citizens? I want sanctuary from an illegal that gets arrested and released, arrested and released. And when they finally get caught doing something, they've been, in, they've been, um, you know, deported 13 times and just let go. Yeah. And then, then they finally kill someone in a drunk driving accident. You're thinking, what, what kind of system do we have where they can just, they, they, we send them back to Mexico and they're back here before we even get back to where the authorities get back from dropping them at the border. They're already back in Chicago, Detroit, or wherever else that, that they can get sanctuary. And oh, yeah. We got to say, no, this is, this is such a time as this. This is a time we have to stand up and say, what were we promised? And as black people, we cannot give away our birthrights. Oh, yeah, and, and definitely, you know, when you look at MS-13 and, and, and you look what's what they have done all around the country, and, and I remember uh, a situation that just happened in uh, Newark where some MS-13, they were already locked up. They came out, and then there was these college students, black college students, I think it was, it was about three or four mm -hmm. college students. They, uh, they, they got the college students on their knees, and these are freshmen in college, and they, they basically shot them in the head. They're vicious. And, they're and, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're they, monsters. They, they shot them in the mm -hmm. They shot them in the head. They killed them. Killed three of them, and uh, the, and matter of fact, one of the uh, two of the, the uh, MS-13s are still on trial or are still waiting for trial. Mm -hmm. But they had they were already locked up, but because it was a sanctuary city, that they were released over and over again, and and, and it's sad. And you know the story is: listen, you can have a sanctuary state, but you will still the government ICE will still deport you no matter right. what. Right. You so know, all... if we think about this, Daryl, let's mm -hmm. say that um, there's a deep red state that happens to be conservative, that has to be Christian. If What if they decided not to honor the federal law that redefined marriage? If they decided that we're going to make this a sanctuary from, from gay marriage, what the left mm -hmm. would be up in arms. They would be, oh, yeah, how, they dare you? Right. how dare yeah. you not follow a federal law? They get to ignore federal law and say, forget you, we're going to keep these people safe. But they're so two-faced and so inconsistent with their values that, that, that I don't even know if they have values or core beliefs. I don't know what they believe in. And it's just mm -hmm. unacceptable that they think that we this is a law that I don't have to pay attention to. What if I decided not to pay my, my taxes because I'm just like, nah, I'm, I need sanctuary from paying my taxes. That's just not how it works. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing. Oh, yeah. that, and I think that's what was refreshing about Trump. He was unapologetic about putting Americans first. And as, as the leader of my family, my husband puts us first. He doesn't go out and donate all of our money to poor people and then looks at us and says, sorry, first you take care of yourself first and then you give to other people. And that's what Trump is doing. Finally, somebody said it. It's, and and, and mm -hmm. the left is like, there's something wrong with that. Right. No, you got to care about it. No, we, it's, it's our country. Right. You take care of country first. first. Is there something wrong right. with that? There's nothing wrong is with that. Is there it. something wrong with taking care the people right. first, getting jobs, educating and, our and people. making sure and taking Built. care of our veterans. Nothing's more oh, yeah, important. We've got veterans, veterans dying, uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, and that scandal in Arizona and all these different places. And it's months, if not years, for anybody to even be held accountable. And I don't know who was finally walked out. That's that's mm -hmm. how are we going to put um, an illegal ahead of a veteran who went over and maybe lost his leg or came back mentally unstable. They they we're willing to sacrifice everything for our freedom, and we're going to tell them you got to be behind some person that's not even supposed to be here. Come on now, that's that's unacceptable. And and that's one of the things that we're definitely going to be talking about uh, on this tour. And I would okay. like everybody, if they can, to go to www.gofundme mm -hmm. uh, forward slash on fire tour is right there on mm -hmm. your screen. That's www.gofundme on. Uh, dot com uh, forward slash on fire tour. Now, one of the things we're going to be also talking about is the whole transgenderism and, and the whole, you know, when you and, and, and what do you as African American black people, you know, what do we believe? Do you believe that a man should dress up like a woman and go into a woman's bathroom? Do you believe that a woman should dress up like a man or, you know, 
and and all these different things that was, was the, happening. The left is just making, trying the to left. everything mainstream. And this is what I say, Daryl. I say all the bathrooms mm -hmm. should be locked and it should be a scan. You put your thumb in that in this little you know hole, and if your DNA doesn't open that door, you don't get in there. I don't care what you dress like, and that's just. Yeah. So, you know, you were at CPAC. I don't know if you saw the um, log cabin Republicans and there was a group of transgenders there. And and, 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 and one was from Trenton. It, and, and I knew the guy. Uh, oh, Lord. And, and I knew, you know, I knew him. Mm -hmm. I, you know, before, right. you know, he, he changed mm -hmm. his, himself. He's still a, he's still amazing. I don't care. And See, so, dude, I'm, I'm I knew the guy. you for having the courage to say that because people are going to say, no, you can't say that. But you're right. And the one that was from California, I'm sorry. I, you cannot tell me that person has joy in his life when you're six. Yeah. Some, you're six three. You have on a really bad wig and press on lead nails. You walk into a room. Everybody knows that you're not a woman. How are you, you're going against your DNA? How God created you? You cannot tell me that this person is kind of like Bruce a gender married twice, still married to a woman, have his grandkids. And I just asked. I said, Hey, what is your grandkids? You used to call your grandpa. Now they call your grandma. And he said, oh, my grandkids came along after my change. It's been six years. That person, we, we talked for 20 minutes, and I was so close just to say, do you have real joy in your life? But now that you, you know, made this transition, I know that's not joy. And, and, and it's, it's, yeah. it's that's, we talk about mental illness in a country, every time a, a person shoots up, a, oh, mental illness. But how are we going to address mental illness where that's deemed as acceptable, that's deemed as normal, a man deciding... You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a woman today, and you look like a linebacker. Nobody, you're not blending in. Nobody's not not. But you know, come on now, you know, that's some of them can pass. But seriously, yeah, you know, you walk in the room and everybody knows, and they have to act accordingly. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and I ask them directly because in Illinois we have a case where this kid decided that he was a girl and he wanted access to the women's locker room, the girls' locker room. They had given him a separate accommodations, but he decided that wasn't good enough. He wants to be in the gym with the girls. And I, it's a my, I have a daughter that played three sports in high school. And I keep picturing her as a 14-year-old volleyball player. And some man who could probably turn 18 in his senior year would have access to that locker room. In any other situation, that person would go to jail. Just because they, um, some of them even haven't even had the operation yet. They're still transitioning. You're going to tell me that it's okay for him to be in the same bathroom, the same gym, the um, locker room is my daughter. And, you know, being a, 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 a teenage girl, you have body issues and images, and you don't even like undressing in front of other girls, let alone somebody that decided their senior year, you know what, I'm a woman, so I need to come in the locker room with you. What has society come to? I think about the greatest generation, and, and, and they would never put up with somebody saying, oh, well, we need to let him come in the bathroom with your daughter. What? Yeah, okay, not yeah. my father, you know, you know, he, he's gone now, but he would have, you know, he would have joked that he, he, that, that he, he pretended that he was a woman so he could go in there. But he would have never allowed that to happen. And when we just had, I'm like, where are the real men that will say, no way he's going to I love you. I love you. You know, sister. I love it's you. It's crazy. You're sharp. <laughs> no. And you know what? At CPAC, I was, I was standing, I was just standing by one of the, uh, that was downstairs. They had all the different people that, you know, different books and organizations <laughs> uh -huh. and groups. So I'm standing there and, you know, he walks by, and I said, I know him. You know, <laughs> I, I know, know you. Face. I know that face. I didn't say anything. And then I went upstairs, and and he was with another transgender guy, and I just, you know, I didn't, I just talked to him. Right. He said, right. you know, hey, Daryl, how you doing? And I'm like, oh, what's going on? And I'm like, okay. How are you? Yeah. And, I, and, and I left it alone. I left it alone. Yeah. But, you know, and so, but it was like, so like, like, wow, what happened? You know, you were such out when last time I seen you at CPAC, maybe four years ago, five years ago, you were you were you were night, you know, just in a jacket and a tie and at CPAC and I saw you and, and now it's it, it's it's totally different. And it's acceptable and we have to yeah. act as if this is normal. And I love when they say he or she wants to be treated as normal, just like any other girl, but you're not just like any other woman. And then all these feminist women, how are they supporting somebody that says that they're a woman now. I thought they were so adamant that women are great and superior and just as, so you're supporting a man becoming a woman. That's not the same thing. We're not equal. We're not the same thing. And how dare you mm. um, just make that acceptable that they're just like everybody else. And it's just so sad that society, especially these little children that they're saying that you know, they give the therapy and the hormones at, at such a young age. And it's obviously, um, you just pray for them. And as Christians, we, we, we don't want to sound hateful, but 
it's just you're going against how you were made, how God chose you to be, and and everything that's in, well, it, it, yeah, God in your chose, DNA. It, and, and we be, and, and and we as Christians, especially conservatives, believe that. But then you have a, a another generation who don't believe in God. Right. right so if you don't, if you if you're dealing with individuals who never went to church, don't believe in God, mm -hmm. so everything is acceptable and say, oh, well, okay. I can be, mm -hmm. I can be a woman one day, or I can be a man the next day. You know. And, and one of the things about your generation and my generation, I had a, I had a grandmother, mm -hmm. Mama Gracie. Mm -hmm. She took me to church six days a week. Mm -hmm. See, like, that's what I'm saying. We black people and, go to and, church. And, and, we and, know the truth. And three, and, and three services on Sunday. Thank you. Sometimes. And you ate there. Other... You did everything there. You never, you know, I grew up Catholic. So Catholics uh -huh. were in and out in the hour. All the black people in my neighborhood were like, what kind of church is that? Because they were in church all day. You know, I was, all back, I was home in an hour and 10 minutes. They didn't understand that. Because that's how we were, just sanctified, just filled with the... I mean, you were exposed to the truth and nobody didn't care if it offended you. They just wanted to share the good news of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and nowadays it's not politically correct to, to say they want to go Christian light. And um, and, and that's just not the... You just go go right to the word. You got to go to the scripture. And, and again, if yeah. you're a Democrat... And I, tell, mm -hmm, and, and, and I tell people, my grandma took me to church these five, six days a week, three times on Sundays, some Sundays, and she had a shotgun in her house. Thank you. Well, a shot, a black shot. people that don't want to own a gun, they think the government's going to save them. Oh, yeah. and, and, and it's like, are you kidding me? The NRA is not the bad guys. And who's killing? What, I, there's a meme on Facebook. It's a, it shows the NRA emblem and the Planned Parenthood emblem. It said one of these organizations sells arms and the other one doesn't because we know Planned Parenthood was selling body parts. That was created to, to originally part of the NRA was to, to allow black people to be armed because the Democrats didn't want us to be armed. Their militant arm, yeah. arm of the Democrat was the KKK of the Democrat mm -hmm. Party. They didn't want us to go to the polling place. They didn't want us to be free. We had to arm ourselves just to protect us from the Democrat Party. And somehow they flipped it. And, and the NRA is just evil. And I, but I love even those Southern Democrats um, that will say, look, you know, they, 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 have, they, they follow all the little regular talking points with the Democrat Party. But when you talk about giving up your guns, they say, hold it, wait a minute. They're I'm not giving the up South. I'm gun. not giving up my gun. And my stepfather yeah. was from Kosciuszko, Mississippi. And we were um, raised in Chicago where you couldn't own a gun. That everybody in his family, I know my stuff, they all, they didn't care. They broke the law. They carried everywhere they went because they, it's just that simple. And I heard Sarah Palin say this, and I love to repeat this. She said, I carry a gun because a policeman's too heavy. And when you've got seconds, to, I don't care if a police response time was a minute, and we know that's not the case. A minute is too long to go. It really doesn't come to protecting your family. Uh, it's just, and to think that it's they It's only somehow, natural, uh -huh, one of the natural things to do. Is to protect your family. And back in the yeah. old days, in the Western days, it was your responsibility. You had to protect your family. You policemen, you couldn't call the police. You had, you're out there on the, you know, the open, wide country. You need to be able to protect your family in your home. And somehow they've got us thinking that um, the NRA is out to get them. They just want to kill, you know, um, black people and they're out to get us. And, and it's just, I, I don't understand how we're duped like that. But again, if you go to Southern Blacks, they don't play that. They're, they, you know, oh, yeah. not getting my yeah, I, I, I have cousins who are Democrats and, and you know, they love the gun mm -hmm. and, and they say they will never give then up the gun. They don't give up the gun and, and, and that's what's so important. But they're, again, as I said before, the Democrats are amazing at getting their message out and their branding. And even though it could be 180 degrees wrong, and but people still buy into it and it just blows me away. And it's just, well, we got to get better at it and we got to go out and give them another option because I hear that from liberal black people all the time saying, well, Stephanie, what are the Democrat, what are the Republican Party, what are they going to do for us? And I always joke yeah. to myself, I'm like, well, we should just promise you double what the Democrats have given you, more failing schools, you know, worse neighborhoods. But, but, uh, yeah. but, but in all seriousness, I feel like my pastor who says you need to have your testimony down to five minutes if somebody asks you how you got saved. And I feel like as Republicans, we need to have our message and our branding down to a five minute elevator speech where we're talking about the freedom of being a Republican and everything that it, that it represents. And again, school choice and just limited government to have the government get out of our way so we can get back to making widgets. And if you're in Chicago and you want to open up a store, you got to kiss 85 rings between, uh, you know, the, the red tape and the community organizer. Now it's like the mafia or something. It's just get out of my way. Let me open up this grocery store or let me open up this shoe store, whatever, without all the red tape and, and the fees and, and, and everything else that goes into it. Just get out of my way. Let the government do what it should be doing, protecting our um, 
you know, our borders and making it safe and, and having a strong, firm military. It shouldn't be in the business of giving away free phones to people and all these other mm -hmm. things that they're doing that churches should be doing and social services should be doing. We'd have more money for real things if we were not funding all these ridiculous things that um, that we somehow feel like it's our duty as a government. Big government is bad. And that's uh, just a big gov, not a good, it's an absentee father. They replace um, the, the father in the black community with a big check and big gov is a bad parent. You don't want that to be your parent. You want to encourage, you know, black children to be born in a two parent loving home. So yeah, yes. they're, they're good at the branding. Well, you know, Stephanie, uh, it's about that time. Yeah. And I'm um, Stephanie Trussell. I am so I was so excited to have you on and, and you have you have done oh. a wonderful job. When you, you guys you're, come, I want you to come on my show. When you start, you know, kick off your tour, um, you got to come to Chicago and you you got to come oh, yeah, on my show and in studio to talk about what you're doing. Good luck with that. I, whatever I can do, it's my pleasure. But we need to take it to the street and knock on some doors and, like you said, yes. go to those barbershops and 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 preach the. Oh, yeah. and, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, you know, one of the things is about getting on Facebook Live and, and having people exactly talking about what they believe in so people actually can see it on Facebook yeah, we're Live. we're real. We're here. Well, yeah, that's just, you know, keeping it uh, keeping it real, taking it to the streets, and, and, and that's what it's all about. Right. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, you are an exciting woman. You're, 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 you're blessed. Well, you're definitely yeah, blessed. Yeah. You know the issues. And, well, and, and, and you you. you you're a beautiful sister. Oh, you thank know you. And it was, I'm glad that we met on the last day of CPAC because we were all there we trying to too. meet Mark Levin. It was just a great place to meet a lot of patriots. And so I, oh, yes. good luck. We, oh, will, yes. we will certainly talk in the future. And whatever I can do to advance your cause, just please call me and, and it would be my pleasure. Thank you very much. And you're sharp. No, oh, thanks. You're gonna have your, you got to have your Fox News. Ah, you got to no. have your voice. I told you I make too many faces. Fox Radio, maybe. I, I'm afraid <laughs> to even share this video because I know I look like I have it's like a neurological No, condition. you're fine. But you're um, fine. thank you. But you, it's, you it's what you it's what you hear yeah, okay you know and, and the, the message you made me and very comfortable important. and i'm not nervous it was a great interview thank you very much for this opportunity all right thank, thank you. you god bless have a good day take care bye-bye bye hi this is the on friday show with your host daryl mckell brooks and i thank you all for watching and please go to www.gofundme.com forward slash on fire tour um and so it's 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 exciting and was there any questions you guys wanted to ask? Uh, you know, we wanted to keep it to show to an hour, so it's uh, I'll definitely have her on again. But is there any questions that uh, any of y'all wanted to ask? You anything asked me? Somebody said I was tired. Well, you know, I've been up all day and uh, uh, I've been drinking some good coffee, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> and Stephanie, um, you're uh, you're you're ex exceptional. You know, uh, a talker, and you're 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 you know everything. You're 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 sharp, and and you know it's 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 a blessing to have you on the show. And uh, you know, when I invited you on, I said I knew I was going to have someone special. And Stephanie uh, Trussell, you're a special sister. You know the knowledge, you know your history, and you and, you, and your wording is um, it's, it's perfect in, in how you speak. And you, you know, like you say, you know, like I said, I, I uh, you know the issues, and and God has blessed you with that talent, and you are on fire. I love the show. Thank you, uh, Joseph. And I like to please support the On Fire tour. That's www. dot gofundme. dot com uh, forward slash On Fire tour. You can see it right there. And, uh, you know, support. And you can give $5, you can give $10, you can give whatever you feel is in your heart to help out this tour. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's a very smart woman. And, uh, you know, and, and she has a message. And she can, and that message is clear. And it's a conservative message and a Republican message. But a conservative message. And she can definitely direct, speak directly, especially to African American. Uh, men and women and, 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 and people in general about the conservatism. So, you know, she is definitely a blessed person. And, uh, you know, she definitely will come on the show again. And I'm like, she's, a, you know, she's an exciting person. So this is on fire too with the host, Daryl McKell Brooks. Um, is there any other more questions? You know, like I said, I was, I'm going to have more people to come on the show and have a th in conversation and talk about serious issues. Uh, Daryl, did I get to CNN on the drunk guy uh, with, uh, uh, who's that? Amber Nett? No, I didn't see that. Uh, I didn't see it. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out on CNN.
Mm. And I'm drinking good apple juice. And so it's 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 ten eighteen, and uh, I will be back on in a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to take a break. I got to end this this show right here, but I'll be back about five or ten minutes. So please be there and and waiting, and we get to talk about some. Um, I got to call Stephanie back, but I thank you all for watching the show. And and I always quote end it with this quote that. Martin Luther King said that we're all caught up in this great inescapable network of mutuality, tied in the single garment of destiny, and whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be, and you can never be what you ought to be unless I am what I ought to be. Then he quotes the poet John Donne, it says, no man is an island. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Then he goes on to say that any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind, therefore never send to know whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. And that's the way we should be as a country, uh, we should be as a people, and we should support our president that way and, 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 and support him. And, um, and we all must do the right thing. God bless, and I'll see you uh, about 10, 15 minutes. I, I got to drink some more apple juice and come back on. But uh, please, please, please go to www.gofundme.com. Dot com forward slash on fire tour and for the ones that support it I thank you and 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 please uh, share this message it's a, a true conservative message and uh, you know and and the ones who support I thank you and uh, and tell friends about it and uh, God bless I'm out of here